In this first example of Ralph Hurwitz's stability criterion, we have a simple second order transfer function and we want to evaluate if the system is stable or not. Let's just start by creating a Ralph array, which in this case, it starts at the power of two. They have s to the power of two, s to the power of one, and s to the power of zero. Now we can fill in the coefficients of the polynomial in their up and down pattern, starting with the highest order, that is 2. So the first coefficient here is coefficient of s to the power of 2, that's 1. The coefficient of s to the power of 1, that is 2. The coefficient of s to the power of 0 is 1. Now we only have one element here to find. We can find it doing that across multiplication of these elements. So we have this element here is 1 times 0, 1 times 0, minus 1 times 2, divided by the negative of the last element here, 2, so negative 2. This gives 0 minus 2 divided by negative 2 is positive 1. So the element we calculated here is 1. This element is zero, because there is no more elements here to expand the matrix. So this is now the Routh array. Looking at the first column only, we see that all coefficients here are positive, which means that there is no sign change and the system is stable. In the second example, we have a third order transfer function and we want to evaluate the stability of this transfer function using the Routh Hurwitz stability criteria. Let's just start by creating the Routh array. This is a third order transfer function, so it starts at s to the power of 3, s to the power of 2, all the way to s to the power of 0. We can now input the coefficients in the up and down pattern. Coefficients of s, starting with s to the power of 3, that will be 3. s to the power of 2 is 1. Now up s to the power of 1 is 2, and s to the power of 0 is 3. Now that I have completed the array, we can complete the first column here and evaluate the sign of all elements in this column. Let's start with this element here. This element can be found using the cross multiplication following this pattern. So this element is 3 times 3 minus 2 times 1 divided by the negative of the last element at the bottom here, that is negative 1. And this gives 9 minus 2 is 7, divided by negative 1, this is negative 7. So this element is negative 7. Now we have to find this element, because this element is necessary in this part of the array. We can now expand the matrix with 0 and 0, and we do 3 times 0, minus 0 times 1, divided by negative 1, that is of course 0. We can now find this element. This element will be found through the multiplication now of these four elements. We have 1 times 0, minus 3 times negative 7, divided by negative, negative 7. So here we have positive 21 divided by positive 7, that is 3. So this element is now 3. Now we can look at sign changes in the first column. Let's count the sign changes. We start with a positive number, and we go to a positive number. So here there is no sign change. Now we go from a positive number to a negative number that is one sign change and now we go from a positive and now we go from a negative number to a positive number that is one more sign change we have two sign changes positive to negative negative to positive two sign changes in the first column means that we have two unstable roots the poles of this transfer function out of the three we have two that have positive real parts and will make the system unstable. In this next example, we have now a fourth order differential equation. 
let's start with the Routh array. It starts now at the power of 4 all the way to the power of 0. And now let's fill in this table with the coefficients of s, starting with s to the power of 4, that is 1, s to the power of 3 is 2. The coefficient now of s to the power of 2 is 0, we don't see it here, but it's important to add, it's 0. s to the power of 1 is negative 100, and s to the power of 0 is negative 500. We can now complete the array with 0 here. Now let's complete the array. Let's start with this element here to the s to the power of 2. We can now do 1 times negative 100 minus 0 times 2 divided by this element negative, negative 2. So for this element here, we have 1 times 100, uh, this multiplication, minus that multiplication, 0 times 2 divided by this element negative, negative 2. So we have a negative 100 divided by negative 2. This coefficient here is 50. Now let's find the element next to 50 here. In all other examples, we had 0, but now we have an extra column that we can use to calculate this element. To calculate this element, now we will expand this multiplication. Instead of doing 1 and 100, we do 1 and 0 minus 500, negative 500, times 2, divided by negative 2. So this element is again 1 times 0 minus negative 500, careful with the signs, times 2, divided by negative 2 which gives negative 500. The next element here is 0. There's no need to calculate. If you expand the matrix once again with the next column here, the next column is 0. This element here is 0. We can now move to s to the power of 1. To calculate s to the power of 1, we now go down and take these two rows here. So s to the power of 1 here, we have this multiplication between these four elements which will be 2 minus negative 500 times negative 500 minus negative 100 times 50, all divided by negative 50. And this gives negative 80. This element here is negative 80. Now moving on, we need this element. You can now expand to take this, made, this column and that column. We now have the multiplication between this element minus the multiplication between this element divided by negative 50 again. So for this element, we have 2 times 0 minus 0 times 50 divided by negative 50. And this is zero. Of course, the next element is again zero. The last one here, easy to calculate. Now we have these four elements to consider to calculate the s to the power of zero here. So we go with these four guys, 50 times zero minus negative 500 times negative 80 divided by negative negative 80. Here we have 50 times 0. This negative 80 and this negative 80 will cancel out. This negative sign, this negative sign cancel. We are left with negative 500. Quick tip, when you have a zero element in this position here, the result will always be the number that is above it. Okay. So this now is the completed array. We don't need these two numbers. Let's evaluate the stability of this system. To evaluate the stability, we need to look at the first column and count the sign changes. Starting with 1 to 2, there is no sign change. We have positive to positive. From 2 to 50, positive to positive, 0 sign changes. Now from 50 
to negative 80, we have one sign change. From negative 80 to negative 500, we have no sign change, zero, negative to negative, no sign change, so plus zero there. We have one sign change. The system is unstable with one unstable pole on the right side of the S-plane. In this last example, we have a fifth order polynomial. Let's start the Roth array from s to the power of 5 and go all the way to s to the power of 0. And now we can fill in the coefficients. The coefficient of s to the power of 5 is 1. s to the power of 4 is also 1. to the power of 3 is 4. s to the power of 2 is 24 s to the power of 1 is 3, and s to the power of 0 is 63. And you now need to complete the first column. To find the first element, now we know how to do it. We take these four elements, do 1 times 24, minus 4 times 1, which is 20, divided by negative 1, that is negative 20, which is the number here. We now need this element, and this element can be found using now this two and these two elements here. For that element, we have 1 times 63 minus 3 times 1, divided by negative 1, which is negative 60. And the last element here is, of course, 0. Now let's move to this element. Again, we'll take this four numbers here. 1 times negative 60 minus negative 20 times 24 divided by negative, negative 20. And this is positive 21, which is the number here. Now the number next to 21, we again expand the matrix to the right, and you take these numbers, 1 times 0, 1 times 0, minus 63 times negative 20, careful with the signs, divided by negative, negative 20. And this is 63. See again, we have a zero here. The number just above it will show up here. So this is 63. This element is zero. We can now move on to that one. Now in order to determine this element, we need this four. We have a negative 20 times 63. Negative 20 times 63 minus 60, minus negative 60, times 21, divided by negative 21, and this turns out to be 0. This element here is 0. The next element is also 0, and the next element is also 0. Right, this is 0, 20 times 0, 0 times 21, it's all 0. So now here we have an entire row of zeros. We don't need to use the limit that we saw in the lecture because all elements here are 0. This implies the existence of poles on the imaginary axis. As far as the stability is concerned, we can stop our analysis here. We see two sign changes, one here from positive to negative, one here from positive to negative. So those are two unstable poles. And this row of zeros here implies the existence of poles on the imaginary axis. Because you always have complex conjugates, then you have two poles on the imaginary axis. We can consider them to be unstable poles as well. This will lead to four unstable poles.